according to John Dalton's law of multiple proportions, two different elements, <coughs> when they react in different whole number ratios, will form different compounds. We already saw that in a one-to-one -one combination of carbon and oxygen, we formed the compound carbon monoxide, which is a toxic gas. If we have one carbon to two oxygen atoms, we have a non-toxic, slightly acidic greenhouse gas called carbon dioxide. To form the Lewis dot structure for this gas, we see that we need four valence electrons for the carbon atom, and there are six valence electrons for each oxygen. So the entire molecule requires 16 valence electrons. To satisfy the octet rule for both of the oxygen atoms and the carbon atom, the only way to do that is to have a double bond between the central carbon and this oxygen atom, as well as to have a double bond on this side. So for this particular molecule, we need to have two double bonds. And there's no other structure which will satisfy the rules of the lewis langley theory. And it turns out that if we study both by the vibrational spectroscopy and by uh, x-ray crystallography and other techniques, that there really are two double bonds in this structure. So here's another example where the very simple lewis langley Langley theory gives us a reasonable and accurate chemical structure. Nitrous oxide has the chemical formula N2O. Usually, when we see a chemical formula written this way, as in H2O for water, we realize that the two hydrogen atoms are not connected to each other and the oxygen is in the center. Here is one example where the N2O chemical formula actually is representative of the actual chemical structure of the compound. Nitrous oxide has two primary uses. One, it is used as an anesthetic gas, particularly in dentistry. It is also used as an oxidizer. So it is used to make flames burn at a higher temperature either in atomic emission spectroscopy, where it's used in analytical chemistry, it is also used as an oxidizer in dragsters and funny cars, so that the engines have a higher horsepower output. To make the Lewis dot structure for this particular compound, we again notice that each of the nitrogen atoms contributes five valence electrons, and the oxygen contributes six. So we have another three atom, 16 valence electron system. So we see that this particular structure bears a very strong resemblance to the structure of carbon dioxide. You have a central atom, which is double bonded to the atoms on either side. It is very helpful when a student is learning how to create Lewis structures to remember these common forms and wherever possible try to imitate them. So once we've learned the three atom 16 electron system of carbon dioxide we should try to apply that system wherever possible at least as a first try. Nitric oxide with the chemical formula NO is an important guess and this is the Lewis structure for that particular compound. Yes, it is, no matter what it says on the screen. What is particularly interesting about nitric oxide, and that's the name for this compound, is that the nitrogen contributes five electrons, the oxygen contributes six, so we have an 11 electron system. We had said before that there is no way to satisfy the octet rule with an odd number of electrons, and that is true here. We are not able to satisfy the octet rule for nitrogen, for example. 
we see that there's an empty hole here, and there's only seven electrons around the nitrogen atom. We had previously said that these types of compounds are called free radicals, and that free radicals tend to be particularly reactive and often only have a fleeting existence. Nitric oxide is something of an exception to that rule because this is a molecule that is a relatively stable free radical. So it actually can exist for a considerable length of time. It is an extremely important signaling molecule in biological systems. Many medicines such as nitroglycerin exert their effect on the body by generating nitric oxide. What nitric oxide does, among other things, is it relaxes the walls of arteries, so it tends to dilate blood vessels and thereby lower blood pressure. We notice in this molecule, one other interesting feature is that we have a double bond. So we have enough electrons for a double bond, but we have one electron missing from the nitrogen atom. In general, if we are going to have an odd number of electrons around any particular atom in a molecule, we tend to prefer to have that odd electron sit on the less electronegative element. So since nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen, we imagine that oxygen is so electronegative, it is going to demand to be satisfied for the octet rule to begin with, and thereby leaving the nitrogen atom short. One of the very most important oxo acids is called nitric acid, and it has the chemical formula HNO3. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when we have oxo acids, that no matter how the chemical formula is written, the acidic hydrogen, H, is always going to be connected to an oxygen atom and not any of the other atoms. So even though it's nitric acid, the oxygen is attached, the hydrogen is attached to the oxygen and not directly to the nitrogen. To make this particular chemical formula, we notice that there are three oxygen atoms, each contribute six valence electrons, so that gives us a total of 18 electrons. The nitrogen gives five more, so that gets us to 23, and then one electron from the hydrogen makes a total of 24. So just as we began to be used to 16 electron systems, here we see the first of our 24 electron systems. For this structure to be made accurately, the central nitrogen atom has to be connected by single bonds to two of the oxygen atoms and a double bond to the third. And this is the first of the examples where we have the possibility of one double bond and two single bonds, all two oxygens. So one might ask is, what is special about this particular oxygen atom that it gets to have a double bond? Couldn't we have just as well connected this oxygen by a double bond? And that is true. So in this particular molecule, we have two different oxygen atoms, both of which could have been connected by the double bond, and then the other one would have a single bond. We can switch the single bond and double bonds here if we pull the pins out and we shifted the cards around, which we're not going to do here. That is easier to do when you're drawing Lewis structures on paper. The important thing is, since we could draw two distinct structures where the atoms themselves are in the same position, but we've essentially moved around the electrons, tells us that we have a phenomenon called resonance. And in the case of resonance, what that means is either one of the structures having the double bond to oxygen here or the double bond to oxygen there, neither one of the structures is the correct structure. That's important. When you have two different resonance structures, neither is absolutely correct. The real structure is a kind of an average over two. So in reality, the bond lands from this oxygen to the nitrogen and from this oxygen to the nitrogen will be found to be exactly the same. And remember we had said that uh, double bonds are shorter than single bonds, triple bonds are shorter than double bonds. And if we were actually to measure the length of this nitrogen-oxygen bond here, we would find it works out to be something like a one and a half bond. And that both of these bond lengths here will be exactly the same.
Now this bond here would be slightly longer and weaker because that is a single bond. So we would have two different resonance structures for our molecule here, nitric acid. Nitric acid is one of the so-called strong acids, which means that if we dissolve it in water, it's going to break up completely. The hydrogen atom that we have down here in the corner will leave completely, but without any electrons. So it'll leave as H plus. And what we're left with is the so-called conjugate base, the anion called the nitrate ion. So the NO3 minus one ion is called nitrate. Now this ion has an interesting feature in that we have a double bond here, a single bond there, and a single bond here. And we could continue. There's nothing special about this particular oxygen. We could just as well have put a double bond here and a single bond there. And the same with this third oxygen. So for nitrate, we could actually draw three different resonance structures. And one of the key features of this resonance phenomenon is that the more resonance structures we can write, the more stable the structure is going to be. So we see that nitric acid started as a structure with two resonance structures. After it ionizes to form nitrate, it can form three resonance structures. So this provides a chemical rationale for why it is a strong acid, why it prefers to give up that hydrogen completely, we see that in the process, it becomes even more stable by becoming the nitrate anion. I had mentioned earlier that carbon dioxide is an acidic gas. What I meant by that was that if you dissolve carbon dioxide in water, it will react to form this particular compound, which we call carbonic acid. It has the chemical formula H2CO3. It is a weak acid, which means that it only breaks up slightly in aqueous solution. So it doesn't break up as completely as nitric acid did in our previous example. When carbonic acid first ionizes, it will lose one hydrogen. So we've shown that up in the corner here. So when this hydrogen leaves, we are left with an anion, HCO3 minus one. And this particular anion is called bicarbonate. So the conjugate base of carbonic acid is this bicarbonate ion. So it has exactly as many electrons as uh, our nitric acid example had before and carbonic acid. Again, it's a 24 electron system. And we see it's also a system that involves one double bond and two single bonds to the central atom of this oxo acid. If bicarbonate ionizes further, if for example, it reacts with a strong base, it will lose the other hydrogen which notice was connected uh, to one of the single bound oxygens, not to the double bound oxygen. So if we lose this particular hydrogen, we are left with a new anion called the carbonate anion. So this is CO3 two minus. And we see we have another 24 electron system spread out over four atoms. We have one double bond and two single bonds. Here we have another example where we can move the double bond from here to there to there. So we have three possible resonance structures for this particular anion. So this is carbonate, CO3, two minus.